Hey guys, Kyle here, and today we are going to do sequence detection. Uh, this is like inputting passcodes for a variable amount of inputs, uh, or something like Simon says, although I leave the inputting of the code to you. You can do this randomly or however you want. This is going to cover how to actually test uh, for the player's inputs and compare if they're the same. We're going to take a look at a command block implementation, which is kind of long here. And then we're going to take a look at a data pack implementation that is uh, kind of my recommended library for you to use if you want to do this, uh, have this implemented very cleanly and simply, although it is not incredibly user friendly, it does take a little bit of technical skill. So let's just talk about the basic concept. So what you want to do is you're essentially going to create a code, which will be in storage call and the code will have a sequence of characters in this case one two three four so when i click on this and i do slash data get storage sequence code i have this sequence of numbers one two three four and what i want to do is allow the user to make inputs and when those inputs have the same uh pattern as the sequence code then you are matching. And so to actually test if two arrays have the exact same values, the method is pretty simple. So what you do is you copy the code onto a temporary location, and then you try to overwrite that with the input. And if they are the same, the score, the result will be false because it can't copy them. If they are not the same, then the result will be one because they are different and they can't copy them. So let's take a look at that in practice. So let's do data modify storage sequence temp set from storage sequence code. So this copies it onto temp. And so we can just get the sequence and you can see uh, temp has one, two, three, four. Okay. Then we can copy onto temp test. Okay. And you can see it said nothing changed. The value the specified value already has these values. And so what we can do is we can store this on a score. So we can do execute store result score dot match sequence run. And you can see that the match score matches a zero, which you'll see open the door. Um, but the match score is zero, which is zero because it failed to copy them. But if I do data modify storage test set value, sequence test set value, and I set that value to one, 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 one. Then when I do this, it will, it will be able to make the copy and it matches set to one. So we just need to enact this principle with some inputs from the player. So as long as the inputs from the player can build an array just like this, and then test them when they are the same length. So the way that this works is pretty simple. So um, what I use is interaction entities for the inputs. And so each interaction entity is just uh, has a special tag for each number. So one, two, three, four. And so then when the interaction entity has data called attack, which means the player left click them, and it has a tag of one, then it will append to the input sequence a one. And so if I do, if I hit this one, you can look at the storage and you can see, oop, So we can get the in sequence and it is one. If I click it, I get another one. And so it's just appending a value of one to this list, making it bigger and bigger. It will append a two if the tag of two has a data of attack. It will, if the tag of three has the data of attack, it will append a three. And if the tag of four has a data of attack, then it will append a four. So each time you punch one, two, three, or four, it will append a one, two, a three, or a four. So if I punch a two, then it has a two now. Finally, once uh, any time that any of these are punched, it will test if, if any of them are punched and run a sequence of commands. And so the sequence of commands will first remove the data from all of them so that they are do not have it spammed because when you punch an interaction entity, it gets MBT called attack and that MBT will stay forever. And so that just removes it so it only triggers once. Then what it does is it stores into the score length and it gets the input. And so when you do this, it, it, it results in putting the length of the input sequence as a value on the score. So storing on the score length sequence, run data get sequence in. And so right now the length of it is three and you can see there's three elements and then the score on the right is three. Then it does the same for the code and stores that on length one. So if the 
length is equal to the, uh, the code is equal to the input length, if the two lengths are the same, then we need to remove the data from test, copy the input onto test, try to copy, remove the input. So we just do this in this order because it's command blocks. Then we copy the code onto test. And so the result of that gets stored into the match score. And then finally, the last two commands, just if match is zero, put a redstone block. If match is one, put sandstone. And so this makes it very simple. Now, obviously it's kind of hard to tell like where in the sequence you are. Um, so that I leave up to you to code, but this just shows the principle. So hopefully that was pretty understandable. Now, if you want to see a library that I implemented here or a library that you can use, stick around and we will go over kind of like how to use it, how to make your own sequences very simply. So the library implementation is just a data pack that has a couple functions, but it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't have any ticking functions, which is really nice. Uh, so what you need to do is if you want to create a passcode with a sequence, then you first run the function place sequence, and this will place a marker entity that is the current sequence you are trying to manipulate. And so if I do this function anywhere, it will just place it, but it's good to know where it is. Um, you could change it from a marker to another type of entity. It really doesn't matter. Um, but I'm just going to place it. All right. So then I need to do slash execute as at e tag equals cw dot sequence limit sort equals nearest limit equals one run say hi. So you can uh, run data get entity at s. So you can get its data. You can see this is the sequence entity. I just use marker because it's the lightest weight. But this basically is how we're going to get dynamic sequences so we can have multiple in our world without having to add extra lines of code, which is very nice. So basically, this one, you have to add commands for every possible input button and every possible code you could have. This allows you to have multiple different sequence codes um, tied up to uh, these entities here. So next we're going to summon an input. So all you have to do is run the place slash input function, and this will put an input down, and we're gonna put the same thing as our example there. I'm gonna hit F3B so I can see all these hitboxes. So these are our inputs. Now the problem is what are the inputs and what is the code? Well, to actually manipulate the code, what we're going to do is run this command here, and instead of data get, we're going to do data modify entity at s data.code, and you're going to set a code value using strings. So the code has to be strings, and so I'm gonna do it just one, two, three, four. But these strings are actually going to correlate to tags. So let's go data code set value. And so what's important here is that these strings are the tags that you assign. So I'm going to go to each of these and apply the inputs. So we're going to do tag and then tab completion to be the entity we're looking at. Add one, then add two, add three, add four. <clears throat> so that gives us our four inputs. And since our tags are just the four, three, two, one, then we are going to make our code this one, two, three, four. So now we're going to hit enter. Uh, I'm going to kill these just in case there's any overlap with uh, the tags. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch these one, two, three, four. And it says match with two A's. <laughs> now I'm going to do another sequence one, two, one, two. And it says no match. So it works exactly like this but you can do it all in game without having any extra code added. The only extra code that you need to add is what happens when the match is successful, which can be kind of up to you. I mean, this isn't like this isn't like a great library that I'm going to throw on GitHub. This is just a download and description that gets you started. And so when match occurs, you can make it do certain things. And when no match occurs, you can make it do certain things. Um, you could technically, I guess, attach a macro command to the entity here. So I might expand this in the future to make it a full data pack, but I just wanted to show it to you as an example, uh, as a tool you can use. Uh, really the important, the more difficult part in my opinion than detecting if two sequences are the same is actually setting up the visuals so the user know what's, knows what they're doing because that's a lot of like uh, code to make it like, I don't know, buttons push in, turn on lights, that kind of thing. Uh, but anyways, that's just an example of how you can actually make this thing very dynamic with sequences. I can create another sequence so I can go like this. Check this out. So I can go place. No. So I can place a new sequence. And then any input I put after the new sequence, they're tied to that new sequence. 
right? And then I can do slash tag add a b. Oh, that was actually the wrong one. Okay, there you go, ABC. And then we use this command we did here to do A, B, C, bam. So if I go bam, 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 match, bam, 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 no match, but I can still do this one. One, two, three, four, match, no match. So they both work simultaneously, which is kind of cool. Uh, I might expand this in the future, in which case I'll make a separate video going over the full library and its capabilities. Um, but for now, this is what you get. Anyways, if you thought this was cool uh, or interesting or useful, leave a like. This was actually recommended on the Discord in the video suggestions channel by Sonic Smoke. So thank you for this cool idea. Uh, if you guys want to see anything particular, let me know there or in the comments. And uh, anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace.